up everybody, Graver here, and today we are going to be working on something that could be interesting or uh, could just be a prop. I haven't decided how I'm going to keep it functional or if I am or what, but whatever. So if you've already read in the description below, I have picked up a rival fate and I had some parts 3D printed for me to turn this into a laser pistol from Fallout. Now, as I'm recording this, the series just came out, and so far I'm loving it. I'm also a huge Fallout fan. Um, but yeah, I've always had kind of like an idea of doing a Vault Dweller cosplay in the back of my head amongst all the 40 other <laughs> ideas that I have. But I saw someone on Reddit, and I'll put their name here because right now it escapes me. But I saw them doing a kit for the Forerunner, which turns that... Uh, rival shotgun into a fallout laser rifle even though it still shoots uh rival rounds but then he had posted up this well what's going to be this mod and i'm like that's really cool and i've always had in my head of wanting to make like my own version of pew pew so that's what i'm gonna do today so let's go over to the workbench start taking this apart start prepping it and I will show you the kit in detail there. Okay, so here are the basically the parts I'm going to be working with here. So I have the rival feet here. Um, once the parts are put in, it will still function properly. Pull back, that's not going to pop out, but you'll be able to still fire no problem out of it. Uh, this is the front end of the blaster, and this actually converts it from a rival to an inline, well, the Front barrel is supposed to be an inline clip. I want to say up to four shots, but I can only really safely fit three into here. So there's that. Um, a little bit of greebling that goes on top of it. This back cover, which will go over the sights and just slot right on top. Uh, unfortunately there is some trimming that has to be done so I do actually have to take down the fins here which it's fine it is what it is uh, I just got to figure out if I once these are ready to go if they just stay snapped on or if I have to glue them uh, but this actually is going to fit into the front of it so you don't have to worry about gluing it and this actually will replace the bottom cap of it one thing I did forget to grab is actually there is a bar that runs between there so what I'm going to be doing for the pew pew is the main body of this is going to be uh, red. The basically the 3D printed parts are kind of going to go uh, gunmetal and a little bit of yellow uh, accent painting, which I'll probably wind up doing by hand. Now I'm going to put a picture of pew pew up here because it has a couple extra things on here. Uh, I may wind up doing that. I'm still kind of tossing it up uh, on how I want to go about those things. So I may wind up adding them in and you know what, if I'm doing pew pew, I may wind up adding them in anyway, because it's not going to be an exact one-to-one. -one. That's why I wasn't hundred percent sure if I wanted to do it or not, but we'll see how it goes. Um, as far as the markings go, like here, the rival, uh, 2000 or the 22, 100 here and the rival markings up here, obviously all of that's going to be going, uh, probably will wind up filling this in. I actually do have some red Bondo that I can use for that. So, uh, it will take away that. So this way it'll be nice and smooth. Uh, same thing up there. So yeah that's going to be it so i'm going to wind up gutting this thing out so i can start uh, working on the body i did some preliminary sanding on these earlier uh just to try and get a head start on it because the prints are i'm not gonna lie they're a little rough um but i kind of did rush uh rush request these so i'll take the hit on that one uh because yeah, but for the most part, all of the all of the pieces are still really, really good. It's just extra cleanup for me. But, oh, and the coloring we're going to use, which is, I don't know what I did with those. Oh. 
so for the body sorry if i just spiked on that one i went a little too close to the mic so for the body i'm going to be using this matte red um, it is the premium lacquer paint much very similar to the metallic uh, purple that i use so i'm hoping this will be a really really nice um, solid color base for everything um, the this highlighter yellow uh, most probably will wind up just going straight black uh, the parts as I said are going to be gunmetal and I might wind up making the t-pull and this upper section also the gunmetal just so it all matches up um, so yeah that's everything here oh and the switch and the trigger will also go black as well uh, just so this way I can it'll It'll, it'll go a little nicer and I might do a little detail work on the trigger, but that's it. Enough me rambling. I'm got some work ahead of me, so I'm going to get started and I will see you in a moment with an update. Okay. So here is the update of where we are at the moment. So I have done filler primer on all of the 3d printed parts and I have done a coating and also did the fill-in on the um, the recessed lettering on the blaster, uh, the blaster itself. Um, I got it pretty good, at least I thought I did. When you see it in the light, you can still kind of see the difference in what I had filled in and what is plastic. I'm hoping the paint itself will actually cover that up because i mean i did a pretty decent job i mean the the putty i used kind of cracked in a couple of places but as long as i can get a good coating on it it should be fine um i did filler primer on all of the 3d printed parts and then i just added some of the gray vinyl dye on top of it just to give it a little bit of extra paint so now what i have to do is i have to work on figuring out coloring and if i want to put those like motors on top of this thing to really replicate what um what is actually on pew pew or if i want to leave them off um again i haven't decided that yet or not but yeah the uh the parts that are going to go black are they're all done so that's all sound good these are the only pieces that i now have to paint uh i also have to find a new catch spring because apparently the one i had went flying somewhere and i don't know where it went so i'm gonna figure out how i'm gonna do the paint job on this to match best i can to pew pew and then also at least makes sense in what i have to work with so uh i'm gonna figure that out and then you'll see some progress up next okay so we are getting into the home stretch now i had i put the metallic uh gunmetal that i was going to use i actually didn't use my gunmetal paint i actually used that uh silver paint that i had gotten when i worked on the dead man's tail which was the bear paint and i gotta say it still looks really nice it has that dark gray color just with that nice little sheen um i'm really hoping i don't lose it when i have to clear coat this which i know i'm gonna have to uh i did some hand painting as well the uh wire harness or bar or whatever uh i did this originally in the silver and then i realized in the picture oh crap that's yellow so uh, he repainted it yellow or i should say um everland sunset from citadel and i also added that along the sides here at the bottom of what would be at the bottom of the pistol grip I'm not worried about adding the red circle around here. Again, this is not going to be a one for one pew pew. This is going to be my interpretation of pew pew. Um, like I said, I still haven't figured out if I want to do the transistors 
or resistors that are on top of it. I mean, they just look like motors, so it wouldn't be a problem. It's just the mounting them. Um, so we'll see where it goes from there. But for now, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to tape off the silver on here so I can do the matte red, which should be metallic, on here, on here, in this spot here, because I realized not too little too late, but at least bef as I was in my reference photos, that this back portion of the Pew Pew is actually red to match the rest of the body. So that's going to go that color. And then on here, this little raised area right where like these um, bolts are, that is actually striped red. And I am going to uh, do that on here. Now I'm not going to do the bolts. So it's just going to be this one stripe. Um, so that's going to be really interesting on how to tape it off, which I have there. And then of course my exacto knives so I can trim stuff off. Um, so yeah, I will get working on that and I will show you how that looks off when done or once everything is painted I haven't decided yet so see you in a moment okay so i wanted to show you um how i have everything all taped off uh i mean it's just basic taping tape off what you want to keep the original color it's not a problem I will be perfectly honest, I should have just done this in red and then taped off to do the silver, but it is what it is. Um, the body of the pistol is very basic, it's just this. And I do actually, and I have a silver Sharpie pen uh, that I'm going to do for a couple of the markings on, on the body just to kind of give it that little or I may wind up using some like lead belcher I haven't decided yet but just these holes this way it breaks up the red itself as well now the front part <laughs> all of this for literally one stripe but and I totally forgot to do this side because I want it to be like this so yeah so <laughs> Uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, taping things off to get something just ever so perfect. Sometimes it takes a lot. Sometimes it doesn't take so much. In this case, it was a lot. So I'm just going to, you know what? We'll do this side here because, and that's kind of a thin spot. So I'm going to put the tape on my cutting mat here. I'm basically just going to score out thinner strips so yeah for any kind of prop making mod making whatever cutting mats are wonderful little godsends to have so so there's that one and there is that one so that is now blocked off and just get it right to the edge of where you're wanting to stop the paint and it doesn't matter if it comes up on the sides it's you want to make sure it just blocks what you're trying to cut off so and there we go so now i am going to go paint these up oh and i forgot to point out earlier with all the other parts and all they came with these little energy cell um just prop pieces and the cool thing with it is they actually work as ammunition holders because you can just fit because as I had mentioned, I think this was supposed to be a four dart inline clip. I can only fit three. So this actually works out perfectly because I had these little energy cells hold three darts. And if this thing takes three, then there you go. So, and it comes with two of them. Um, 
I don't know where I put the other one, but it's somewhere around here. I did not lose it. So, but yeah, wanted to point that out. And now I'm going to go uh, get back to painting on it and then we'll do detailing. Okay, so we're in the home stretch of this now. So the red is all done. And I got to say, I really like how it, this red works. And here we have the front end piece and what i'm going to do is um, i'm going to put those uh like kind of like dots in here so it kind of looks like a bit of some uh screws holding this thing together um i do have to do a little bit of cleanup it was for the most part this was clean um there's just a little bleed out over there but I also have my Agrax Earthshade and Tech and the uh, Strickland Mud um, here. So I'm going to do some weathering on this. Um, how much I still have yet to decide in regards to that. Um, I'm also going to use some Nulled Oil. I just didn't get that out yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of like a quick and dirty slap it together. Uh, once I get these done, and then I'm going to start weathering it. So uh, to do this part, at least, uh, I got some, the lead belcher here. Just want to wet my brush tip. So this way, get it nice and going. A little bit of shake. Okay. Uh, I'm actually running low on this, so... I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of the brush. And basically, I'm just going to try and dot it in. So this way, I'm just filling the cavity. And then I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry. So... Now this is going to need a bit of a steady hand, which sometimes I do not have, and just a lid, or actually I should say a whole lot of patience, because you're adding the, because these are the fine details now. This is what's going to break up all of that solid red, and just kind of give your piece that little bit of extra dimension and i mean i'm tr like i said i'm trying to also keep this functional but i mean for all in essential purposes this is going to be a prop piece but sorry and i didn't realize i was actually doing that out of frame so Again, just a little bit in there. Just kind of push it. See, this is the lucky thing about this. These is that since this is recessed, you can just kind of put your brush in the middle, push it to the edges, and eventually you will fill every spot in. And as long as you're careful you're not having to bleed over see like i had a little bit up there but again we're weathering so i'm not a hundred percent worried about making sure every last bit is perfect so So there we go on that. And now the other fun thing is on, well, at least according to the game picture, this side of PPU has a bunch of tally marks on here. So I'm going to be doing that as well. So I don't know if I'm going to match again, the tally marks exactly, but I'll, since this is the flatter side, I don't have to worry about those. I'm definitely going to do it on this side and we'll add some tally marks there. So uh, I'm going to kind of just work on that 
and then when we get ready to weather it, I'll kind of slapdash put everything together, and then I'll show you how I go about the weathering, and then it's going to be, once I do that, once the weathering is on, I'm going to clear coat everything, and then it will be final assembly, and then we'll take a look at the final results here. Okay, so we have the, we have Pew Pew mostly together. Um, a couple of things to note of that are obviously different from the in-game thing is, as I had said earlier, I did not put on the resistors, so those are not there. Um, another thing you may or may not notice is the wire is actually on the opposite side, at least on this model. Um, so yeah, on the image I've been using of Pew Pew, this wire actually comes along over on this side and kind of covers up the tally marks, but now the tally marks are completely open so you can see them and they're over here. Um, two things I do need to do, obviously, once everything is all together, um, I don't have to worry about this piece here. However, the upper piece here, I'm probably gonna have to glue down um, a little bit there so to keep that all in place, but I also noticed that while I was trimming this out, I didn't want to trim out everything. Uh, I may wind up having to because I did not realize this completely sits in this open spot. Um, I was trying to keep this little bit um, in there so it's less open space, but I may wind up having to just get rid of those or at least definitely grind off um, these little bits right there but that's neither here nor there but this is together enough so that i can actually start doing some weathering so as i said we have some uh no non known oil uh some agrax earth shader which is basically a brown version of the black wash and a little bit of the uh sterkland mud to just help really build up the gunk because technically this had been sitting in Sunset Sarsaparilla's offices so it needs to be a little dirty so we'll start on this side and then we'll work our we'll work our way around so uh, let's start off with the excuse me the null oil I also have a paper towel here on the side so that I can wash away excess. So let's turn around there. And yes, I know this will dull that yellow. I don't want it sitting too much on the surface per se. But I really want it to sit like here in the crevices or at least like in that area. Because I'm also trying to go off of the trying to match it up kind of best I can to the reference photo so switch over to the earth shade and see if I can't contrast this black with a little bit of brown I 
Actually, that's looking much, much better, actually. Now this thing looks like it's dropped in. <laughs> now this thing looks like it's been dropped in a vat of oil. But I mean, truthfully, when it comes to weathering, you got to kind of just Bob Ross it and just, you know. <laughs> we don't we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. So I'm kind of liking where that is on here. And so. Sometimes you just got to be careful that if anything runs, you just got to make sure you know where it went. So, and before I flip this, I'll take some of this Strickland mud and kind of get a little bit around there. Because this is actually kind of, this one is actually textured. So, this one I'm being... A little bit more conservative with because this is going to look kind of cakey and I just wanted to be a bit of a subtle overview so got this side down and basically I'm just gonna do that now to the top and this side of it and then I'm actually going to clear coat it as is um, because, well, I don't know. I'm, I may wind up taking other parts to clear coat everything. But, yeah, that's essentially the weathering portion of this. So, um, I'm going to finish this up. And then I'm going to get everything back together. Make sure everything is working properly. And you're going to just see the final results. So, here is my AER-7 Laser Pistol Pew Pew Edition finally done uh this was about a week's worth of work between prepping the 3d parts uh painting the hand painting uh waiting for decent weather because we had a weird cold snap which was in jersey which kind of sucked but over and all um this was such fun to build the 3d parented parts looked look so good and especially now that i have all of the weathering done um, it honestly, it really does look amazing. I'm very happy with how this came out. Um, a couple of things I do want to note, um, the 3d printed parts, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, yeah, they took a little bit of TLC in order to get to where I wanted them. But I mean, honestly, it was worth it because it looks so good. All of the pieces really do. Um, the body prep work really wasn't that awful. Um, I tried filling in those uh, Roman numerals as best I can, and I mean, it's still kind of visible, but not really, so I'm just letting it go at this point, but I mean, thankfully, once I got the weathering done on this, oh, that honestly, it just tied it all together. Uh, the weathering just really came out so good. It's in like just the right spots. I don't, I feel I didn't overdo it. Um, I will say maybe one side's a little bit more weathered than the other, but, you know, it is what it is. This was laying around for God only knows how long in the game, so I'm sure one side probably got a little bit more grody than the other. Uh, but also, the fun thing is, now, this is supposed to be a four-shot inline clip kit. Um, I don't know if maybe I took too much out of the back thinking it was maybe fill material or what. 
I can only get three shots in here before it starts feeding into the plunger area. Or if I have four darts in it, it's where I think it stops. I, the fourth dart's like half sticking out and it doesn't look good. But I can successfully fit three darts in here, which is totally fine because this comes with, well, I should say the, the, uh, the files come with a little thing for energy cells, which is what you used in three in New Vegas instead of the fusion, instead of the uh, fusion cores, or I'm sorry, the fusion cells in four and 76. But the neat thing about this is it holds three darts. So if you need to reload, you literally just take the darts out of the energy cell. So now this is a spent energy energy cell front loaded in one two three now i will make a note of this i found that this does work best with um max starts or the ember darts the adventure force starts i've tried using them with the nerf half darts and i think the uh the tips are too big for them or too big for the barrel it doesn't feed quite right so but i have the three darts in here so one two three um i don't have sbf numbers on this because i really wasn't worried about performance i'm just happy it works and it looks good because for me, this is more going to be a prop piece than it is an actual blaster. Um, I'll probably bring this with me for like a pistol round or something, depending on the war and if there's a theme for it or something. Uh, but yeah, really happy with how this turned out. Um, honestly, I can't wait to actually start working on the Forerunner because I have a kit for that that makes it look like a laser rifle. So that's going to be really fun, and I can't wait to do that later this summer. So, so that's going to be it for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the AER-7 laser pistol. Or, and hopefully this is still relevant when this comes out, because the Fallout series just started appearing on Prime, not sponsored. Um, I just really love Fallout. And how are you enjoying this series on it? Personally, I'm loving it. I have two episodes left. Um, I've been trying to savor it as best as I can and avoiding spoilers at all costs. So let me know what you think of this series too. Um, but oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And we have the PO box. So if you want to send us some snail mail, you know, well, I as I always say, it's a lost art. Writing correspondence is such a it's such a, a nice, old-fashioned way of saying hi and keeping in touch with everybody. But anyway, thank you all very much for joining me for this video, and I will see you guys next time. Later!